Shikimu Buddha was in one perspective, he was an Indian prince, born two and a half thousand years ago in northern India at a time when uh, that part of the world was advancing rapidly, economically, culturally, politically, and who find himself therefore born in a time of great intellectual and spiritual ferment. He'd uh, enjoyed uh, everything that a royal upbringing could provide him in terms of uh, comfort, but also in terms of exposure to the most sophisticated culture of his day. But nevertheless, by the end of his twenties, he had discovered that there was a hollowness in his life, in the life of those around him. He found that the old certainties of religious ritual, the Vedic rituals, and the Vedic caste system, uh, did not provide any answers to the greatest questions of life, which are, where am I going? What is my destiny? What should I do at the time of death? And above all, how can I be free from the suffering that seems inherent in every aspect of life, from birth right through to, to death? And so, responding to that, he tried all the different uh, alternative spiritual systems of his time, yoga, meditation and so on, only to find that his pursuit was fruitless because he was all the time trying to uh, satisfy the needs of a fiction, the fiction which we call the self. In fact, Buddha finally came to the conclusion of the six years of search, six years of practice, that is that very fiction we cling to that there is something in us which is independent, permanent, autonomous, which somehow controls our body and mind, is clinging into that fiction, both emotionally and intellectually, which actually imprisons us in suffering. Because seeing the world from that distorted perception prompts us to act with desire, hatred, ignorance, jealousy, pride, doubt, and so on. And then those actions themselves become pro producers of further suffering, further confusion. So we're turning in a wheel, a wheel of confusion, a wheel of suffering and frustration. And Buddha put an end to that decisively when he saw the nature of mind, timeless, unborn, unceasing, free from all division, free from the very concept of self. He therefore became the Buddha, the awakened one, one who was awakened to a true nature of reality. And spent the rest of his life making available to others the very means by which they could gain that same freedom. But from another perspective, a deeper perspective, the Buddha represents something that's inherent in all of us, the potential for enlightened Buddha nature, as we call it. And therefore, in this deeper perspective, rather than seeing Buddha as a unique historical character, so to speak, we see Buddha as a representative of this universal thrust, this universal drive towards enlightenment, to awakening. So we see Buddha's life, really, in a way, as a kind of drama, a drama played out to instruct, to instruct us, to instruct others, in the means by which we can find the Buddha nature in our own life. In that sense, therefore, as it's put in the Mahayana Sutras, Buddha was already enlightened. He appeared in the world to demonstrate how an ordinary person could find the way to, to enlightenment. That was his, his that, that is how he manifested to show that. So that is the deeper way in which we understand the Buddha.